Today on Good Nick Kisses is the flower loom. We've had this highly requested video, so I'm going to make it for you today. We're going to wind the flower and we're going to darn it in three different ways, plus a combination as a bonus. Let's begin. Welcome to Good Nick Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Today we're working with the flower loom. We're gonna be working with worsted weight yarn and the clover flower loom. It's also called a Hannah Ami. And depending on your country, it may vary in color uh, for the different looms. And they all work the same. It's got a variety of shapes and sizes. You can make a bigger variety than what I'm showing here, but we're gonna concentrate on how to wrap the loom, how to wind your yarn around, and then how to darn, because these three different methods will help you create some really beautiful flowers. In the background, you can see part of a shawl. It's this one right here, just so you can get a better idea of what you're looking at. If you're interested in making this shawl, it is flat found in the Flower Loom Crochet book that I wrote with Beth Ham last year from Annie's. So if you'll click on that link down below, uh, you can get that book. And there are other uh, projects in there. All right, let's begin. Grab your supplies and we'll start. All right, so we've got our loom. I'm just gonna pull it out and we're going to take out everything and use the largest round loom and if you notice I have a metal needle and it's just because I like using it with this one so it does come with the plastic needle we'll pull all of these out you can leave your center post in for different winding techniques right now I'm going to take it out and we're going to replace it with this loom here and you've got little holes you just pop them into that little hole here and shift it and it'll just adjust right in there it's not going anywhere to begin we have our base with the loom in it and our tapestry needle will thread a number four worsted weight yarn which is a four ply and we're going to put it down one of these holes here and it will go up through this slit in a loose knot any of the ones around the side will do and once you tie this in this becomes the bottom of the loom or your beginning spot you can put a slip knot in and rotate it to the back or put this one in the back and that will hold it in place. All right, so all of them begin that way. We're gonna start our first winding technique. We're going to put the yarn up this direction and go around the top peg. And I'm just gonna hold it in with my finger and I like to rotate it around as I work and you'll see that. Just do whatever is easier for you. And then go around this peg down at the bottom and hold that in with your thumb and then go around the next peg up top here. So we're just keep continuing going around, and come down and go around. And as we rotate, you'll notice that the middle gets crisscrossed. Okay. So I'm wrapping in the direction that, uh, I'm wrapping the peg in the direction that the entire loom gets wrapped. It just keeps turning and wrapping. So the yarn is going in this direction and we're wrapping around that way and the yarn is going in this direction, we're wrapping around that way. Okay, and we get down to the end, we're gonna come over here to the bottom again and just tie that together loosely. You can bring these uh, to the outside uh, bring them down to the bottom. I like to keep them out of the way so they're out of the way of my darning. And then we're going to tie a loose knot here or a little bow tie like you tie your shoes. All right, I'm gonna show you the next winding technique. This is how you wind to get a hole appearing in the middle to make it easier for center darning methods. We're going to go up, but we're gonna go from the right side here and then we're gonna go cross to the opposite. The word opposite is operative in this one. So we're gonna hold it there and come down. Now this is the only time I come down straight on the same side here. I'm gonna go around and hold it. I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna go from, see I'm on this side of the peg. I'm gonna to go to the opposite side of this next peg and go around that way and hold it. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go to this opposite side here and hold it and the same way all the way around. I find it easier to kind of grab it and pull upward and come down and hold it. It's actually easier for me. So I'm just gonna keep going all the way around. You get the idea. And as you go, you'll be able to tell more on yours that there's a little bit of a hole and I'll show you with my needle here in a moment. Okay, go around this last peg here and 
yeah, did the opposite, and come down, and we're going to tie it, and I'll show you the hole. Just going to tie it in a loose little tie, overhand tie here, like you're tying your shoe. Okay, I've got my needle, and I'm going to stick it straight down the middle. The other one was a little bulky in the middle, and now you can see that I can put my needle straight through very easily. And when I pull it back, you'll see how easy it is. See this? You can see how it's moving around. The other one was a little bulky in the center. Now, depending upon your yarn, mine's a little soft. If yours is really stiff or a raffia yarn, like a straw type yarn, then you'll be able to um, see that hole really distinctly. All right, let's begin darning techniques. The center of this flower is what I call the basic darning method. It uses just a simple winding method, either with or without a hole in the middle, and then that center gets covered up. It's um, thicker, it's kind of hard in the middle here, and just simply done. We're going to wind our yarn around the loom, make our flower, and you can either use the yarn that's here and pull it through as your center as the same color or you can get another color. If you want to use this yarn, you're going to cut about three feet of yarn to darn the center with. I'm going to use a contrasting color. We're going to come up through this petal here at the top of our loom, pull through and leave a four to six inch tail and hold it. And then you're going to come straight across and down through this petal here, come all the way through and pull to the back. And when I'm not on camera, see how this can catch this way? When I'm not on camera, what I do is I hold it and pull it down. Um, I put my loom facing down and then I pull this way. So that way the yarn kind of falls down with gravity. Okay, now that we've come across, we're gonna go to the next petal over. You can go to the right or left, whichever is easier for you. And then you're going to go over and down to the petal across from it. So this one is going to come up and then down this petal here. And I'm just going to turn it and show you what I was talking about earlier. Just get our yarn here and just pull straight up. That way it doesn't catch. Okay, and we're going to come up on this next petal and go around. So I think you have the idea. Now one of the tricks to know which way you bend. So I just came from this one. So I want my yarn to go to the one across. So if I put my thumb on the one I'm going to use, then I know which one is next. So I'm going to turn it, pull it down. I'll show you what I mean. So now I know I just finished here. So I'm going to move my thumb over and I'm going to go across from that one over here. So we're going to come up and then down the one that I'm marking with my thumb. and then move my thumb over and come up again. So now that you uh, have got that uh, flow down, we're gonna go all the way around and you're gonna end at this pedal and meet me back up. I'll show you how to fasten it off. All right, I've gone down through this last one. I like to come up one more time through this beginning one here and then go down around that last one to finish that off. Okay. So that completes that. We're going to turn it over. Now there are a couple of different ways you can do this. You can take your yarn and you can tie it in a knot, a square knot, and then cut it off and do the same with your tails, or you can weave those in. So uh, what I like to do is go ahead and pull this out so you can see it. Some people tie it with this base in place. I don't think you can see it very well that way. So we're just going to untie this. Okay, and take this part off that had that little beginnings part on there. And this one that's on the top, you can feed it on through to the back with your tapestry needle. Pull that on through. And this one's actually already at the back, but I find it easier just to put it, poke it on through with a needle. All right, and then we're gonna just pull this off the loom. Okay, so we've got the base set aside. We're going to turn this over, and you can trim up your ends here, make them more manageable. Okay, so I'd like to start by um, burying these ends in first. So we have our purple. Now you can tie them in the square knot, as I was saying before, like this. You tie it in a knot like this one, 
two. We'll do the purple one in that method and you can see how I'm doing it too. And I'm just tying it right at the edge here. And then when I clip it, it's not as easily noticeable. And the purple one is probably just fine, but the green, you might like it to not have a little knot at the back. Now, if it's a brooch or something like that, an embellishment that's not gonna be seen from the back, it won't matter, in which case I say, just go ahead and tie it in a knot. But if you wanna hide those tails in and uh, let this be seen from the back, say it's for a shawl or something, this is what we're gonna do. So we'll just take our needle and go back up through right here and then pull across. And it just weaves that tail in. And you're just going to do that a couple of times. And you'll do that with both ends. Oops, spot's a little tight with that knot there. So I'm just going to go back in this direction. And pull that on through. And clip it. And get the next one. and go through over here. You can also take a little bit of fabric glue and um, put it on the knot to keep that in place or these ends if you'd like. But once you weave this in a few times, it's not necessary. If I can, I like to get it in at least three times. That worked really well. All right, so we'll just clip that off. The tail is buried. And then you're just going to take this off of the loom. You just go in pulling those off and you have a nice flower. So just to show you the difference, this flower on the left was made with uh, weaving it um, the first method or winding it around the first method. And then this one was a flatter method. Both of them have about the same thickness. So it doesn't make a difference uh, which way you have wound it. All right, let's do the next darning method. This next darning method has a center in the middle, so you can see it has a little bitty, it's a hole, it's very well covered up now, but it has that little dot. Uh, it makes for a nice flatter center, and you can see on the back, it could be reversible if I had darned in the ends there. This is where I just tied a simple knot and cut it. All right, so let's begin. You're going to want to wrap your loom with the center uh, opening so where when you wrap it around it makes sort of that opening there so that method we're going to do as we did before go through the bottom but we're going to go up through the center and pull through and leave a tail okay and so now we're going to go uh, up and down through this center pe uh, petal right here go down I tilt my loom to get that in there and then we're going to come up through the center. So this always comes up through the center and then down through a petal. Now, once we do that first one, let's pull it. I'm going to get my yarn tail a little bit more manageable. And now I'm going to go down through the next petal. Pull it through and up through the center and then down through the next petal. This one is nice. Uh, you can see it really develop. Um, you'll really see these sort of stand out, these threads here uh, sort of stand out uh, until you get all this darned in. And uh, you just simply make sure you go all the way around getting every petal and you can kind of look in between them and see if you uh, hit it or missed it. All right, so I think you've got the gist of that. Just keep going around, pause your video and I'll meet you when you're at the end. See you soon. As you can see, I've gone all the way around. I'm going to go through this last top loop one more time in case it bumps out a little bit and you want to make sure that it's nice and secure. So see, I'm going to pull on that and it has this really nice circle here. So this is that center darning um, type of embellishment here of, of securing this so uh, I want to take this off of the loom and secure it in the back so we're just going to untie from the side here and then this will get fed down into the loom okay go find where this one comes out 
put it through. And then this one to come to the back, and I'll show you how it pops off the back too. You can just pull it this way and then turn around, and you might see it like that rather than feeding it through with the needle. Okay, set my base aside, trim my ends. Okay. And then to darn the middle, you can tie it in a square knot, or you can darn in the ends this way, or weave in the ends, not darn them. So we're just going to thread this. And then I like to take my uh, last one and go ahead and tuck that one in first. Uh, we're gonna start going through a few of these strands here. And you can do this with a little sharper needle if you like. I'm gonna use my darning one. Pull that through. Cut that a little short there. And just go through picking a few stitches. And then another way to get it nice and secure in here after you've got a few is to go in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna pull this through and I'm gonna go in the opposite direction to get it secure. Go a few stitches back. And pull that on through. And then that one is nice and secure. I can trim it off. And then you wanna do that with your other tails or you can tie them in a simple knot this way. and then trim them. You can also leave these tails to tie them onto something. I put a little dab of fabric glue. And then just pull that right off the limb. And there you have your basic one with the center. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Let's make the back stitch darning for the center of this flower. This one has two rounds of back stitch on it. You could even do three. If you could, you could get four in here. You could change it from one color to the next. I'm gonna use one color here. So I've got my contrasting yarn. I've wound my loom. Um, I can make it uh, the winding with the center hole or not, just the flat one like I've got over here. Either way, we're gonna start the same way. We're going to put our yarn in from the top with our needle just go through uh, the middle of one of these loops here these petals we're going to go under the next both sets of loops for this petal so in between a petal under the one a full petal and then go in between and under that next petal so you've actually got four strands uh, on top of your needle we're going to go ahead and pull it on through leave a tail. I like to leave a little bit of a longer tail on here just in case I tug too hard. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back uh, to the full petal that I missed, okay, and I'm going to go between the petal here and I'm going to come up just like I did between these two petals or under these, this full petal next to it, and then in the middle of the next petal. You may have to put your thumb on there. And so I've got four strands on my needle. We're gonna pull on through, get that loop in here. This first one is a little fiddly here. Make sure that tail comes out and now we've pulled it. And so you can see this little loop on here. All right, so now I'm gonna um, go again. I went through, um, let's see, I went through this one. So I'm gonna come through uh, here and we're gonna go up through, so this one just came down, so I'm gonna go down from where I just completed this one, and we're gonna go underneath that next full petal and in between here, and pull through, and then you can push that back stitch down to where they're about the same spot, and then now I can tug and make sure that they're the same consistency. So this one I'm gonna be leaving alone. I'll tuck this in a little bit later. So now that you can kind of see the patterning you've got going on, we're going down from where that one ended, that little stitch, underneath the full petal and in between half of one, 
pull through, push it down. All right, come in between this petal, behind the next full petal, and through the middle of the next one. I'm gonna rotate my loom around, make it easier. Pull that through, and now you can see I have four stitches on here. This is the back stitch. Let's get a little closer. We're gonna go in between, right here, okay? Underneath, and then in the middle of this next one. Pull through. That's that tail. And you can see those here. And you can just adjust it down. And you can adjust these afterward as well. But before you make a second round, you're going to want to um, get these exactly where you want them. So again, find where you finish that stitch. Go, uh, so we're going in between this petal, under the full one, and coming up through the middle of that petal, and go around. So continue around until you uh, get to this part, part here where we began, and I'll show you how to go around the second time. Pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. I am at this point here, and I forgot to mention, when you get to where you have these extra strands, it's a great opportunity to go ahead and tuck those behind. So I'm going to go in between my petal, and I'm going underneath these loops for this petal, and I have an opportunity to push down those extra strands there, and now go up through here. So when I get ready to untie this from the loom, uh, it's going to be really easy for me to see which ones go to the back, and I don't have to feed them through. Okay, so we're just going to continue um, going through the middle of this petal here, underneath the next one, and underneath or between that one after. Again, we're working with three petals at a time, but only half of the one in the front and the back. Okay, continue on, and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I've got my tail uh, put to the front here to get it out of my way. I'm going through these last few loops. And then the last one that you see, I've got it coming up where this tail will go around these two strands. And then this one I can continue working on around. So I'm going to go ahead and take this moment to stop and pull my tapestry needle out and take this strand. And we're going to go ahead and tuck it to the back. I'm going to go where this one is coming out but right before it, okay, and they'll, you'll see a little bitty strand behind it. You see this little, oh, see that little strand in there? So you're just gonna push it down there and get it out of the way. And then we're gonna continue moving on for the second round. And then before you do that, you can go ahead and clean this up and get it into the circle that you want. So we know this is coming out here. So I'm going to go back to the middle of this one. So it's coming out here. We're going to go back one, under the two, come out the middle. Basically, you're just going to have four strands on here. If you started on the out, the between petals and do it, just know that you're going through having four resting on there as you go around. Okay, so I'm coming out this one, go back to and keep going. So you can see how I've got these two layers on here that way. And after you get it, it'll just move really quickly. Let's see how that works that way. And then you will just tie that in uh, when we get to the end there. Uh, this one's really nice because it's a reversible looking design. See this? Okay. All right. Uh, meet me back up when you get to the end there. See you in a moment. Okay, I've got my last one. Every other one has, uh, or all of the ones, have two on top of each other. And then this is the last one. So when this gets wrapped around, it'll be done. Pull that on through, and then um, you can go uh, back down through where it came from. And you've got that last loop on there. 
And that is it. So now we can just go ahead and pull this off, untie it. And when we pull this off the loom, they should already fall to the back very easily if you avoided those earlier. So let's pull this off the back. And when we flip it over, you can see that these are already freed up. And you can see how very reversible this design is. So you would just take these and bury the tails uh, by uh, threading your yarn, uh, threading your needle through here and weaving up under through this yarn here. And then bury your, um, your uh, purple ones in either by cutting them or using this to tie it onto something uh, or uh, burying the tails in here as I've done uh, earlier in the video on the other flowers. Okay, so the last one is I want to show you how to make this combo one. So what this is working with is making a center first and then making the back stitch on here. So this is combining two different techniques. And of course, you can make as many rounds on the back stitch as you like. Um, this is also a great opportunity if you want to have a color burst of a bigger color here and then make it uh, get uh, darker or uh, lighter in the center. So you begin by um, making the um, winding around with the... Um, the center stitch here. So I'm going to show you how to begin. You're going to wind your yarn around where it's open so that you can make this one. So go ahead and wind it and make this one first and I'll begin where we're ready to start the back stitch on this design. See you in a moment. Okay, I've made my center darning and I, uh, I normally finish on this loop and this would be um, an extra one. So I like to finish off this last one by going down through this loop here and then pulling it tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and go up through the center again and through that area again, but I just wanted to get that completed to make a nice full round circle. Okay, so now I'm going to go down through where I just went through, except I had to go back up again. So this is down again through this top petal, and then we're going to go underneath four of these strands, which goes underneath the next petal and in between the one after. Pull it through like that, and we're going to start where our back stitch is. So now it's nice and secured in there. We're going to go through the middle of this petal here that we just skipped and underneath the next one and in between. So we're skipping one in between. Go around and that'll pull through our first deck back stitch that you actually see. The other one is just hidden right up on top here. And normally if we did this uh, in the back stitch without the center part, this would be a long tail here um, that you would see. So we're gonna go um, through the middle of this stitch here Okay, so where the end of it is, you can co kind of go in between. You're going to go down and skip a petal and go in between the next one. So you've got four strands on your needle. Pull through and it makes that next one and just push it right up against the center. And go down, skip a petal in between and then pull through. And that makes that third stitch. Push it down with your needle and you've got the gist go in. In between under one and in between come up pull and push it down go down skip a pedal in between pull up push it down go down skip a pedal in between and pull up so you get the idea and you just continue uh, around and around until you're done so you could go all the way out if you want to and um, and just enjoy yourself I hope you enjoy making your different flower designs and here's one more and be sure and um, a little tip for you if you want to have a double flower say you want to put another flower inside here before you darn um, or wind you're gonna want to start with a blank loom and put down both looms first and then wind this 
biggest one first and then wind your next one. And then you'll do your darning in the middle. And it's best if you do your darning in the middle um, as much as you can while it's on here. And then you can take it off and sew it um, without this base on here. But the base gives you a nice strong thing to hold on to rather than this little bitty loom. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video today. On behalf of myself, it's Kristen at Good Knit Kisses. I hope you enjoy watching. Be sure and tag me on social media at Good Knit Kisses. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love to have you. Please comment below, which style is your favorite center? Mine is this combo one. I really like it. It gives it a nice sturdy flower and I enjoy the fact that it's really reversible and strong and sturdy. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.